How's it going you guys and welcome back to Content Ready Fitness. My name is Hudson and in today's video I have 8 incredible exercises that are going to drastically improve the mobility of your squat. Whether that be a back squat, front squat, overhead squat, you name it. I recommend trying out all these exercises because they make a huge difference in how your body moves through the range of motion. If you learned something new today, make sure you hit the like button, it helps you out a lot. And then make sure you check the notes down below for sets, reps, and time frames for all these exercises. So the first three are gonna be stretches. The first one, we're doing a simple down dog stretch. Now, this one is great to help open up and lengthen your calves. And all you're gonna do is, you're gonna put yourself into a butt up push up position. You don't have to get your head through as much as you typically would for a normal down dog you would see in yoga. You can bring your head forward a little bit. So you're gonna try to rock back and forth and getting your heels as close to the floor as you can. The longer your calf muscles are, it'll help you increase your ankle range motion. If they're really tight, it tends to have you not be able to drive those knees as far forward and turns it more into a folding over position versus getting those knees a little bit more towards those toes and having you more up and down in your squat. The next thing we're gonna go over is a runner's lunge followed by a hamstring stretch. So for runner's lunge, you get into a long lunge position chest come towards the knee, you're gonna raise that back leg and push hips down towards the floor. So I feel a deep stretch in my hips, I'll hold here about two, three seconds, then I drop that knee and push my hips back, so I straighten out that leg and I get a deep hamstring stretch. Try to keep your spine as long as you can here, don't just drop your chest down, you won't feel as much in your hamstring. Nice flat back, come back up, drive that hip towards the floor as that back knee hovers again. The third stretch that I recommend, very basic but very beneficial, is just a squat hold. So if you want, you can add a weight to this. You can hold a dumbbell, a kettlebell, anything around like 10 to 20 pounds and get to the bottom of your squat. Otherwise, body weight's fine as well. But you're gonna grab your fists together and push your elbows inside of your knees and kind of just work through this position. Kind of just wiggle side to side, forward and back. Just open up any tight areas, any uh, sticking points you might have. Great way to help loosen up those hips and get you in a nice deep squat position. So once you've done those three more specific stretch uh, mobility drills, help open up those joints, the next are to get those muscles activated and get you strong in that range of motion. So the first one we're gonna do is just arch raises. So the biggest thing I see people struggle with is maintaining the arch of their feet, which is crucial in a squat. If my, the arches of my feet collapse inwards, then naturally my knees will kind of follow as well. And if that happens, it doesn't matter how hard you think about driving your knees out, you don't have that support below you to keep those knees out anymore. So the knees are keep caving in and putting your knees in a poor position that's gonna to lead to problems down the road, injuries, things like that. So try some, if you notice that when you go to squat and you push that big toe down, your arch tends to collapse towards the floor and you feel your whole foot touching the floor, this is a great drill to do. So all you're gonna do Standing in a normal position, you're gonna push your toes down and then over exaggerate that arch, come back to normal position. You're gonna do several of these for about 10 to 20 reps. Hold each arch for about a second. Really think about pushing the toe down versus curling it in. You don't wanna curl those toes underneath you. You wanna think just pressing it down and using that forefoot and your heel as uh, support for your body weight. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do a dead bug. This is a great exercise because another thing I see people do all the time is when they squat, they initiate the movement by pushing the butt back like this and creating this huge arch, this excessive arch in their lower back. You want to support that natural curve of your lumbar. And to do that, you have to squeeze your core in, then push the butt back, and then sink down to your squat. No one is ever going to squat with their chest totally upright unless if you have crazy ankle mobility and can still keep your heels down while doing this. But no one else, no one I've seen really squats like this. You want to focus on locking in those abs, pushing the butt back, and then sinking down. So this drill really helps you focus on that specifically. So laying on the floor, I'm going to bring my knees over my hips, my arms over my shoulders, and then squeeze in my low abs and push my low back against the floor so there's no space underneath. From here, I extend one leg and my opposite arm all the way out to full lockout. I still keep that back flat. I come back to the middle, and then I switch sides. If that's not too bad, you can do the same thing with legs locked out, drop opposite from one another, still keeping those lower abs engaged. A great way to teach you how to keep that lumbar support and engage your abs so you're not using your back the entire time. Not a good thing to do. Try to refrain from letting that, that booty pop out too much. Only if you're at the club, then you can let it happen. The next thing we're gonna go over is glute bridge pulses. I love these because not only you get the glute max warmed up, one of the main uh, muscles used in a squat to help you get out of the hole, but the glute, glute bridge pulses helps you target the glute med, which is one of the main muscles used to help drive the knees out. So, 
you're gonna get in a typical glute bridge position. So you're gonna bring your heels towards your butt, you're gonna raise your hips and squeeze your butt, but from here you're gonna drive the knees out and then come back in. Out, come back in. When I do those, I feel the top of my butt working. That's your glute med, that's where you wanna feel it. If you have like a hip band or a hip circle with you, you can put that on as well for less resistance and your booty will be burning in no time. It's gonna be awesome. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do Cossack squats. I love these because a lot of times people train, they train very linear forward and back. They don't really train laterally. And if you're someone that train, that works out for sport or just for, you know, you wanna keep overall health in your joints, this is a great way to help keep your uh, knees really, really stable and controlled for when you're doing a lot of lateral movements, if you're, you know, do a lot of labor for work or whether you're just playing with your kids around the playground. A lot of people tear their, uh, you know, their ligaments in their knees because they don't have the strength to do these kind of motions. So to do a Cossack squat, you're gonna go in a wider than shoulder stance. You're gonna drop down to one side, keeping your chest up, driving that knee out and over the toe, and then getting as low as you can while still keeping that supporting foot flat. You can let that other leg stool if you want. You can keep it down whatever feels comfortable. You come all the way back up to standing, and then you switch sides. It's crucial not to let yourself twist and then drop your hips open towards the side. You want to keep everything up and down as much as you can. So it's really helping strengthen around your knees, your hamstrings, your quads, your hips, your adductors. Great mobility drill. I love doing it before I squat. It gets you really warm, really fast. It's gonna help keep your knees nice and safe with whatever you're doing in life. The last thing I have is tempo squats. A lot of the times, I see people just bounce out of the hole in the squat and they just go, boom, and they come up. That's not good for any part of your body. And also, when people do that, they're turning off their muscles and they try to re-engage them last second and then finish the movement there. So not only is that not helping you be strong in a squat, but it's not gonna help you get stronger to lift more weight in a squat. So you do a plateau all the time because you're used to just bouncing out of the hole and you can only bounce so hard with the heavy weight on your back. So you can do this with a weight. You have a barbell on the front rack, barbell on the back rack. You can do a dumbbell and you your chin like a goblet position. But all we're looking for is about five seconds going down every time, driving those knees out, keeping that chest up, squeezing those low abs, once you get to the bottom, come back up nice and smooth, squeeze your butt the top so you're getting full hip extension, getting those glutes involved a lot. And again, nice and slow, knees are tracking out, support the arch of my foot, abs are really tight, boom. If you add a little bit of weight, you'll definitely get warm and it'll feel great. In whatever squat you plan on doing for your training, I would just incorporate that movement. So you're doing front squats, add a bar in the front rack, do them there. If you're doing overhead squats, same thing. You can do a nice slow position on those as well. So. If you learn something new, make sure you hit the like button. Again, it helps you out a lot. Try out these exercises. Let me know which one you like the most, which one you think is most beneficial for you, and leave it in the comments so other people can see as well. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe for plenty more content just like this. I will see you guys in the next one. I'm sweating. Gotta get out of my garage. Have a great rest of your day.